I just really love this incredible tree line here that goes around the perimeter of the property. And then you have that gorgeous house sitting back there behind it. Kind of getting a far off view of the house. And you can see how really tall that tower is. Hello world, it is your Uncle Heavy. Today I'm on location near Kinderhook, New York. This behind me is the Lindenwood Estate. It's the presidential home of Martin Van Buren. We're here today to take a look around the property, see what's going on, have a look inside that house. Taking you all with me, already got my tickets. Let's go see what kind of trouble I can get into. Do come along. It's kind of hard to see here, but this is the Hudson River we're crossing. There we go. There it is. I'm surprised that there's actually people here. It's a National Park Service. Turn left onto Old Post Road, then you will arrive at your destination. Then you will arrive at your destination. It doesn't matter, it's a president. You know I love the National Park Service. Starting off with the visitor center here. I always love the National Park Service. Having it being my luck in the weather. We just bought our tickets and it's starting to rain already. <laughs> so hopefully it just stays as a dull drizzle. That wind is picking up. Getting a nice shot of the house from this angle. A section of the original old Albany Post Road is still in use today in Phillipstown, New York and is included on the National Register of Historic Places. So as it turns out, Van Buren was originally from Kinderhook, but did not build this house and property until after his presidency. Our interpreter told us that Van Buren was actually the longest living ex-president that there was to this day. Another interesting fact. Walking up on the house now. It's a beautiful house. I mean, that lift is not doing anything justice for it, but I mean, even old houses need work as well. Architecturally, I don't know what it's called, but there's a really cool tower there with some sort of a lookout up above. That's that's pretty cool to see. Nice if we go up there. They got this cool system here where you just dial in your cell phone number to various stops and it gives you a little narration. Kind of nifty. That is the grave marker of Peter Van Ness, the original owner of the property before the Van Burens brought it. So what you're gonna see now is basically the beginning of what's going to be a very long series. Michelle and I like to visit presidential households and I'm gonna start documenting them here and putting them up on the vlog for everybody to see. So more to come on that, maybe not in the immediate future, maybe in the distant future. We never know where our plans are gonna lead us, but. This is the first of many. Now, one thing I wanted to point out about the house, if you look here, this foundation is actually stone, but if we go past the entranceway, this foundation is brick because this whole part of the house was an addition built later on after the Van Burens purchased it. You can see here, this would be the original exterior wall right there. You can see here, that would be, would have been an original external window. Yeah. yeah. And this would be the whole external wall until they built the addition. So this is the back hall of Van Buren's house. It's part of that extension from 1850. We're going to see the original front hall in a little bit, and it'll become a little bit more clear why they felt like they had to add on a new place to receive guests. 
And look at this original bathtub. It's actually made of copper. Only one faucet because, well, we didn't have hot water. And a fireplace. This is all just acrylic where it used to be wood. And I'm not sure if they're gonna replace that or just leave it as acrylic. And this is a rarity. It's actually a flushing water closet, which for the time was pretty rare. People still had privies, chamber pots, and outhouses. All your hot air during the night. Um, and then you can open up all the windows in the house and get a nice cross breeze going on. There's also a viewing platform up there. He could see all of his farmland from up on top of that tower. So essentially this tower acted as air conditioning. It kind of made like a vortex draw and brought all the hot air up and cooled the house. We're not going to go up to the tower, but we're going to walk up this very cool staircase here. Up to the next floor. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at how twisted it is and yeah. how narrow. Look at how low that ceiling is right there. <laughs> Even me, the ceiling's right here. Very, very narrow. <laughs> very narrow hallways and doors. Here's one of the bedrooms and I always like to point out, look at how short the beds were at the time. I've touched on this before and if you look over there, peeking up over that bed, there's a bed key. So I'm assuming this bed was probably a rope bed, and as you know, tight in the bed, sleep tight. Each room had a fireplace. Very tall rooms in here. And this is the older part of the house. Take a walk in here. Another bedroom. Oh, I love the secretary and the oil lamp. It's beautiful, beautiful windows. Back then, we didn't have electric light, and you had to get as much light as you could in the room, the best way you could. Major Abraham Van Buren's bedroom. Now, I'm not sure if this is the original wallpaper, but if it were period wallpaper, that would all be handmade, hand stenciled on there. That's why wallpaper was very expensive back then. Another sitting room here. Almost looks like a futon, doesn't it? In the back corner here, you also have a shaving mirror. So it is quite short in here. I always think it's funny that they named the third son Martin Jr. Here's his shaving mirror here. Alright. He would have to so clean out to get it. This last room here and then down the stairs through the other door. And there he is. You can see there's some flies here. He was very, very big on um, fishing. There's a servant call bell. Under the bed, there's the chamber pot. Oh, that's why. All right. Wow. So that staircase you just came down, oh it's God. a staircase that the family would have actually used. There's not always one big room here. Van Buren bought this house from a guy named Peter Van Ness. And when Van Ness lived here, this was two rooms. One of the first things Van Buren did when he moved in here was knock down the wall in between them and make it one big room. And this is the best bedroom where you, your best guest would stay in here. And this is actually an original bedroll where your servant would sleep at the foot of your bed. Everybody had the top hats. But look at that wardrobe right there. Beautiful. This is known as the green room where you'd play games or where the children could play. They have a little piano forte. The, this isn't the original table. It's a model of the original table that was here. And this could actually expand to seat 30 people. And you could see by the size of this hall, you could accommodate that many guests. If you look here, here's the doorbell. It's a cable that goes all the way there, all the way across the room to the bell. You can see here, this is all the original wallpaper from Van Buren's time from France. And they pointed out that this is not replica. They actually found the company that printed this is still in business today. So they were able to replace that with the same pattern. And there's a painting of the man himself, Van Buren, and these were his heroes. We've got Jefferson on the left, 
and Andrew Jackson on the right. Another piano forte here. And just think, this is an actual period table that politics of the time were discussed and probably some brandy drinks and cigars were smoked. All these chairs you see with the tape over them, they're period pieces as well. And this would be the breakfast room where most of the meals were eaten. Well, not in the Grand Hall. Some satirical cartoons that he did collect that actually made fun of himself. This is an Athenian type bust of him that was commissioned by his family. Well, this is a replica. The original is in Washington, D.C. But very, very interesting piece. Take a good look at this mirror. This house used lots of big mirrors because at the time it was helped to spread light in a room. But yeah, that's the Van Buren house. This building was known as the gatehouse and it housed farmhands that would farm the property just over there to the right. And if we go this way, there was a twin just on that end of the property as well. Same function. Can't really see what's going on inside there because there's curtains, but I'm sure there's ghosties in there. Some kind of a property marker here, just in front of the gatehouse. All this property just to my left was all part of his farming. He was called what was known as a gentleman farmer, whereas he owned the farm, but he employed people to do the farming for him and then collected the profits. It was almost a style of the time. I'm doing this post tour, so I do know now the very top of that tower is five stories high, which was pretty, pretty high for its time. I wanted to get this angle so you could see how open this farm really is. I mean, if I turn around, you could see it's just, it's all farmland here. It's quite beautiful, actually. Looks like they have a nice little gazebo right here. Imagine just coming out here and having your breakfast tea or your breakfast coffee overlooking these beautiful farm fields every day. Yeah, this is the life. Here's one of my famous panoramics. You could see all the property. There's the house off there in the background. As I go and continue on to the right here. These were all his farm fields. Right up to that tree line right there. All the way over there that to that tree line there was all his. And now that's actually an active farm. You can see to my right here, these lands are an active farm as well. Lots of lands. So not really much to do with my Van Buren video, more to do with my Sleepy Hollow video. This is a schoolhouse in the area right down the road from Van Buren's house. Now I know what you're wondering, what's the correlation between Martin Van Buren, Ichabod Crane, and Washington Irving? Well, there was a teacher named Jesse Merwin who taught at this schoolhouse right here. Now. Martin Van Buren was actually friends with this teacher as well as Washington Irvin. So there is a three-way binding here that goes back to this vlog and my Sleepy Hollow vlog. So it's kind of a cool little trifecta there. But yes, the three are meshed right here at this schoolhouse building just down the road from the Van Buren house. And here it is. Jesse Merwin taught here and he was the inspiration of the beloved character, Ichabod Crane. Now let's see if I could film inside there. You can see it is a one room schoolhouse and there's a chalkboard and seats. Unfortunately, it's not currently open. But there it is. Very cool, very interesting. I love the connections. All right, let's wrap this vlog up. Our final stop is here. This is the Kinderhook Reformed Church Cemetery. And we're gonna go visit the final resting place of President Van Buren. 
once again, I just always have to stop and look at how beautiful old cemetery stones are. I do love cemetery stones. And here we are, the final resting site of President Martin Van Buren. This is another presidential gravesite I've got. Buried in the same town he was born in. So you've got Martin Van Buren buried here. His wife Hannah, just to his side, and her son, Martin Van Buren Jr. All right here. It's amazing that you can get this close to a presidential burial site. Once again, I have neglected to bring a coin to mark my visitation. I think I'm going to just give up on that whole concept of doing that. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to stay tuned for more adventures that will be coming very soon. Till then, signing off from Kinderhook, New York, Bye bye